Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thank you, Ken Hayes, Philip Shane, and Paul Boyer, as well as Tim Stratford. On this episode of DTNS, YouTube has some new features for paid subscribers, AirPlay comes to more hotel rooms, and how bats reduce latency, and how it might help us, but maybe not with latency. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, June 28th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, co-host for This Week in Science, Blair Bazderich is back. Yay! Hey. Hey. Howdy, everybody. Good to have you, Blair. Yeah, Thanks for joining us. we missed you, Blair. It's been yeah, a minute. It's so great to be back at it. Yeah, fantastic. All right, let's get right into it with the quick hits. The Apple Vision Pro is now available in China, Hong Kong, Japan, and Singapore, the first market expansion since its U.S. launch back in February. Next up is Australia, Canada, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom on July 12th. Apple is making some headway in China, again, after a 10% drop in smartphone shipments there in Q1. Bloomberg estimates that shipments rose 50% in April and another 40% in May. Apple and its resellers have been cutting prices pretty aggressively to boost sales. A little war of words going on in the EU with Apple. Last week, Apple announced that Apple Intelligence, their on-device and some cloud implementation of AI, will not launch in the EU later this year, even though it's going to launch most places in the world then, uh, until Apple works out how to comply with the Digital Markets Act's interoperability rules. European Commissioner for Competition Marguerite Vestager told the audience at Forum Europa this week, I find that very interesting that they say we will now deploy AI where we're not obliged to enable competition. I think that is the most of sort of stunning open declaration that they know 100% that this is another way of disabling competition where they have a stronghold already. It's a very long sentence. It is. Uh, a lot of people took this to mean that she was saying uh, Apple uh, is being anti-competitive by not launching in the EU. I didn't take it that way. I read it as her saying it's clearly anti-competitive for them to launch it because they only want to launch it in places that don't have our laws. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Wired reports that Amazon Web Services is investigating whether search engine Perplexity AI is breaking its terms, it being Wired's terms. Wired previously reported that a web crawler hosted on AWS wasn't respecting a setting in Wired's robots.txt file that prohibited crawling the site for purposes of training generative models. Wired is certain the crawler came from an IP address that was controlled by Perplexity. Perplexity told Wired it has responded to AWS's requests and that its Perplexity bot respects robot.txt instructions. Perplexity CEO previously told Fast Company that it does use data from third parties that may not respect robots.txt. But it's not theirs, so different problem. Yep. Uh, you might have run across TeamViewer if you work in the corporate world. It's a remote access software provider for companies that lets you access and maintain computers and other devices remotely. So you can, you know, repair a computer, or get into a server, and it's like you're on that computer without having to actually be there. Wednesday, TeamViewer's security team detected an irregularity and discovered its corporate environment had been breached. Now, the good news is that the corporate environment is separate from the product environment. That's good security practice. So this breach does not appear to have affected TeamViewer's customers in any way. An alert from the security company NCC Group said that the attack appears to have been conducted by an advanced persistent threat group, an APT group. That usually means some kind of state actor. Separately, the health ISAC community has issued an alert that a malicious group called APT29, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, another state-sponsored actor, was targeting TeamViewer user connections. Now, that's separate from the breach of the corporate environment, but they did happen around the same time, so maybe they're working in tandem. 
couple pieces of news that will potentially help keep phones working longer. Qualcomm's SVP and general manager of handsets, Chris Patrick, told Android Authority that his company is working on code changes regarding its chips that will make it easier for equipment manufacturers to keep Android up to date. Qualcomm says it will have an announcement later this year to keep that whole ecosystem to keep Android phones closer to up to date. Meanwhile, the information sources say that in compliance with EU rules, Apple will make it possible to remove batteries from iPhones by applying low voltage electricity to release the adhesives versus the current method of pulling the adhesive off with tweezers, tweezers kind of painstaking situation. One model of iPhone 16 might even get it later this year, and all models of iPhone 17 should have it. YouTube announced some new features coming to its paid subscribers of YouTube Premium. Uh, let's go through these. Uh, Blair, you're you're kind of a regular YouTube user, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Spend a lot of time on YouTube. <laughs> Spend a lot of time. And Sarah, you're more of a dabbler. You know, just I'm a dabbler. Yeah. 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 YouTube I, I, sometimes. I don't really right. upload anything to YouTube, but you know, I, I'm I'm there a fair amount. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, how, how we feel from these two perspectives about YouTube viewing. Jump ahead would let you skip not just 30 seconds or 10 seconds, but to the best part of the video. They would use viewership data and an algorithm to determine where that is. But when you double tap uh, on it, you would skip to the best part of the video as it's determined. Uh, you'll get that on Android right away and iOS in a few weeks. Uh, who likes this one? Who wants to be able to just skip to the right best part? You know, I kind of... You know, looking at the waveform of YouTube videos sometimes where I'm like, oh, man, this is 10 minutes. But, you know, there was a joke that I'm supposed to know about, you know, <laughs> at some point in the 10 minutes. Do I have the 10 minutes? Sometimes I'll look at the waveform and be like, oh, that's where everybody was sharing, you know. And so I'll jump to that and be like, yeah, this is the popular part of the video. So I feel like this is YouTube just being like, we're going to help you do that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the problem with that, though, is that that's just going to compound that spike in viewership in that one space. Uh -huh. It's just going to make that a huge spike because that's where everyone's going to jump forward to. So the algorithm that normally would have people watching the whole video and this is the part where they stopped or this is where the most people mm -hmm. engaged or, you know, that now you're kind of gaming that where you could have some viewership that kind of pushes you to a specific part of a video. Yeah, it spoils the data set, if you will. Um, a self self fulfilling prophecy. Uh, this yeah, it's other like a one, back loop, right? Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Um, this other one is probably not as big of a deal. Uh, right now, you can do picture in picture. You know, where when you when you minimize uh, the YouTube video you're watching, will go down into the corner for you to keep watching it, unless it's a YouTube short. Well, now on Android, you'll be able to do that with YouTube Shorts. Big deal. Kind of cool. nice, I guess. Yeah, sort of. That's sort of a like, eh, I okay. mean, listen, yeah. I, I feel like uh, there are a lot of Android people who are listening right now being like, yes, this is great. This, you know, helps helps me, you know, consume content uh, and do other stuff in a variety of ways. I just don't have, you know, an Android device and I'm not a YouTube premium subscriber. But I think uh, the more that YouTube can sort of be you know, your sort of background companion, I guess, uh, based on, you know, what you're using, the better. Do you watch a lot of YouTube shorts? No. No. Okay. So that doesn't really matter <laughs> to you at all. I get, I get that. Blair, what about it, you? It doesn't, but I, I, mean, I don't that... even know what that is. I feel like. <laughs> what makes that okay. So this one doesn't YouTube. work for either one of you. It's like, <laughs> yeah. but I will okay. say Picture in picture is very valuable to me as someone who has a video on YouTube that is over two hours long every week. Ah, it's very yeah. important to me that people can go picture in picture because otherwise I don't know if if people would stick with us through the show. All right. We it's got three features time. available as opt in. So you have to go to YouTube.com slash new and say, I would like to try this out. And of the three, you can only have one of these active at, at once. Uh, the first one is shorts smart downloads and since neither one of you are that into shorts i imagine this is not going to be your choice but it will automatically down youtube shorts it thinks you would like for offline viewing that one's also android only for the moment uh conversational ai is the second one uh this lets android users in the u.s tap the ask button underneath some videos to 
chat with a chat bot about that video. You can ask things about that video, or you could ask for similar videos, et cetera. And then a new design for the desktop watch page. Uh, Blair, of these three, is there one you would activate or none? I mean, I'd have to see the new design. I think that would be the one I'd be most interested in, but it would really depend. I also sometimes really push back on redesigns of the way applications. Yeah, are. yeah. Uh, so no chatbot for you then? No chatbot for me. <laughs> what about you, Sarah? Is there one of these you, if it came to iOS, that you would activate? Sure. I mean, I I don't even know what YouTube Shorts are. I know what they are, but like I don't know how. Uh, the YouTube short experience is different than Instagram reels or TikTok. I, I assume it's kind of the same type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay. You know, offline viewing. Sure. If I'm, you know, it, it, you know, go to the doctor's office and they're running late. Uh, this seems like a good thing. All right. And then lastly, uh, Android police noticed that a YouTube support page mentioned testing at mentions in comments uh, so that you can, you know, notify someone that you're talking about them. And in a separate community post, YouTube said it will introduce new plans and is exploring new ways for you to share your benefits with friends in the future. Uh, some of that is regions that don't yet have YouTube premium. They mentioned regions specifically, but it also sounds like other tiers besides just the current YouTube premium tiers, which are an individual plan, a student plan, and a family plan. Um, there's really, it's really hard to tell what they're offering, and, and so it's really hard to evaluate uh, what we think of that until we find it out. Right now, the family plan doesn't require you to be in the same household, just the same country, so maybe it's a way to share a family plan across borders. I don't know. Hmm. Um, well, speaking of uh, being across borders, uh, you might be taking a vacay uh, coming up and being in a hotel. <laughs> if so, kudos to you. Samsung is now rolling out AirPlay support for some of its hotel TVs. Instead of packing a you know big rig to figure out how to plug you know it, you know Apple TV into the back of a television, et cetera, et cetera, to watch content, you can AirPlay from your iPhone or your iPad when staying in a hotel that supports this television system. You do need iOS 17.3 or iPadOS 17.3 or, or later. No official word on which hotel chains will be offering Samsung's AirPlay-enabled TVs, although Samsung says they will be rolling out. But the feature launched earlier this year on LG hotel room TVs at certain IHG hotels and resorts. Those are properties in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, with more locations promised, although no details on that yet. So some of this is a little thin, but I think in general, hotel software is a thing that a lot of people don't realize is a separate piece of software <laughs> that uh, their devices uh, didn't used to work with and now at, in certain cases will. Yeah, I, I was a uh... free dependable Wi-Fi for you to use from your device. So I that feel like is, that's often a stopper, right? Yeah, th yeah. it's gotten better. Uh, more, more hotels are just including Wi-Fi as, as part of your, what you're paying them, uh, than, than there used to you be. You sometimes get it's, lucky with an ethernet cable too. It's not always, uh, it's not always great Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, sometimes they'll do the thing where like, we'll give you sufficient Wi-Fi to check your email, but if you want to stream something, you're going to need to, you know, pony up. But one of the things that was interesting about this is Samsung's implementation automatically connects you to the hotel Wi-Fi on the television. So when you do the AirPlay, it will supposedly be a be a seamless experience to connecting to the wi-fi uh i don't know what they how that works if you have to pay but at least it, it streamlines the connecting to the wi-fi part interesting i can only um you know in the past i never really cared enough to try this out i just sort of i don't know watched local news on my hotel tv because you know what else am i going to do um or maybe streamed something on plex from my phone itself but um I, I knew folks who would literally just pack rigs to be in the hotel and just, you know, be able to, like, play their Xbox games or, you know, access their Netflix. And, you know, there are a variety of things that would it would all be like this whole 
you know, uh, let's see, you know, what they let you plug into the back of the TV. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, ah, kind of thing. So I think, I think this is a way for, you know, again, not in every situation, but for people to be able to travel uh, a little bit more seamlessly and still have that living room experience. I really like the Chromecast stuff that I've run into in hotels where you, you scan a QR code, uh, and then it asked you the YouTube app launch because it's usually just for YouTube. Uh, YouTube ad, app launches, and you say, you know, do you want to put your YouTube credentials on this television? We'll clear them out at exit. Uh, and you say, sure, you know, white knuckle. Okay, I'm gonna try to clear them out, per, you know, manually and and not trust you, which is what I do. I I clear them out before, but for the stay, then you just have your YouTube account on the television. Here's the the downside to that that I've found, and I think AirPlay is a much better uh, better solution in this case. When you have YouTube running on these televisions, a lot of these times these televisions are a couple of years old, and it's really slow. So, like moving around and selecting the videos can take time. Yeah, I'd love to not have to bring my HDMI cord when I go yeah. traveling. That's what I currently do. And half the time, Same. like Sarah mentioned, there's there's no port on the back or they've affixed the TV in such a way I can't attach. <laughs> right. I have yeah. I have uh, I have I scratched myself times... and strained muscles trying to get behind a hotel television yeah. for sure. <laughs> right. Yep. And and sometimes you politely say, hey, I'm trying to do this. It's not weird. I, you know, I don't want to like rip anything out of the wall. Like, can you help? And they go, no. Yeah, no, I never ask. <laughs> That's, I just, I assume they're just going to be like, no. Well, I, I've only, I, this has only happened to me a couple of times, but I only ask where I'm like, yeah, I can't do this without actually like breaking something. So I would like, you know, the hotel maybe to give me another option. <laughs> <laughs> they send someone up to the room and they're like, ma'am, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just no, Wi-Fi? But- Does the Wi-Fi network? I'm like, a eh, different situation. I happens. think it is significant, though, that we're seeing, uh, you know, hotels just move to internet access and internet apps uh, yep. are the way people are are entertaining themselves in, in real life. And they need it in their hotel rooms, too. So g- give them cheaper, better internet and give them more uh, ability to use their own stuff. That's the nice thing about AirPlay and Chromecast is that you can just use your own stuff and then... Right you know, watch it on the TV, use that as a screen without having to hurt yourself plugging in an HDMI cable. Well, and you know, this goes without saying, but you know, if you have an iPad, for example, and you're like, is the content not going to work on my iPad? No, it probably will. But you might just want to take advantage of the way that the room is set up. And yeah, you want the big screen to TV. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, folks, you might want to watch Tom's Top 5 on a big screen. It is a, a YouTube short that you can now download offline if you opt into that uh, feature. Uh, you can go get it at youtube.com slash daily tech news show. Uh, this week, I'm counting down the top five tech predictions that I got wrong. I, I admit to the f- five worst tech predictions I have ever made. Uh, you don't want to miss that. So catch it at daily tech news show on TikTok, DTNS picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and youtube.com slash daily tech news show. Every system has lag. We talk about lag and latency all the time. The internet has it. Uh, communication in space, famous for it. Bats have it. Uh, research done by scientists from the National Institute for Basic Biology of Japan and Doshisha University used 3D motion analysis and computer simulations to discover that bats have a way of dealing with latency. They have four key behaviors to overcome delay and still be able to track prey like moths effectively. Uh, Blair, let's start with these four yeah. behaviors. How do, how do they deal with latency? I usually just yell and scream at my ISP. I assume that's not what bats do, though. No, they somehow can maneuver in midair and catch moths at this amazing rate. And so it comes down to these four behaviors. They can predict target direction. So that's like leading the target in space mm-hmm. invaders, we could say. Yeah, um, yeah gotcha. Adjusting the sensing rate. That's uh, kind of changing how they're, per- it's almost like how you perceive time. Um, oh. It's almost like ev- all the sensory around you slows down, I would say, is how we wow. would perceive it. But basically, it's like their refresh rate is super fast. Wow, <laughs> that's then- amazing. And then they're adjusting their angular range. So basically they're, they're um, 
Well, the first time I read this, I was like, oh, they're zooming in. No, no, no. They're zooming out. So they can really? catch this thing while it's moving quickly, no matter what direction it moves in. Oh. And then the fourth piece, so those are all three perception-based tactics. The fourth is actually an action that they take, which is they're doing counter maneuvers. And I had to dig deep into the actual paper to figure out what that really meant, because I was like, oh, are they like pushing them in a direction? Are they just adjusting where they're flying? Well, they're actually doing their own kind of intense set of things to um, essentially sneak up on the bat mid, or on the moth mid flight. So they're um, giving a false depth perception due to reduced motion parallax, which is also known as the motion camouflage effect. Basically they're doing a hairpin turn. They're like going around and then turning back towards the moth so that because it's dark and, and all this kind of it's stuff, it's like a high speed chase. Them, yeah. Yes, it is. And because they're coming at them from almost a 2d perspective, it, they don't look like they're coming as fast as they actually are. So this kind of deceives the moth. Um, and then they also are changing the angular velocity, which uh, which helps with that as well. So they're, they're doing the sensory tracking, approaching, and deceiving of the target through the way that they fly as well. So if I'm understanding this right, they're good at space advisors, invaders. They can slow down time. <laughs> they zoom out and enhance. Uh, and uh, and then like they have attack pattern delta like in Star Trek where they you know like do some maneuvers, yeah. that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So uh, for the second and third one, I kept thinking about um, Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and how when you're you're kind of you're falling and you want to shoot an arrow, you can slow down time uh -huh. and zoom in. Right. It seemed exactly like that actually the way they uh -huh. were describing it. That's amazing. Um, tell us more about the technology they used to figure this out when they were studying the bats. Yeah, um, so they found these in particular these bats, uh, Rhino Lophus Nippon, the Greater Horseshoe Bat from Japan, um, and they used two different types of detection models to try to figure out how. Uh, the bats were incorporating all this information in real time um, because that's really the application of this, right? Is how can we use these different tactics in technology or uh, the way that we sense things to track targets? And so they were trying to figure out if this was based on um, a 3D target location, which assumes that the mm -hmm. bat and the moth move linearly at a constant speed. So that's that kind of like leading the target thing I was talking about. And then they used a 2D target detection model to try to do what the bats were doing in this model. Um, and they, that assumes that the target direction changes at a constant angular velocity after last detection. So instead of looking at direction of movement, you're looking at um, angular velocity. So you kind of, it's part of this um, uh, radius of movement that you would be looking at. Um, and so uh, as the second model, the 2D target detection model with angular velocity is the one that provided the most significant um, results based on what they saw in real time with these bats. So so some some uh, some high speed camera work and and some simulation. Right, exactly. Yes. And so they, it started with watching these guys in in real time. Um, and that was that 3D motion analysis and uh, high speed cameras and microphones. And then they started modeling this on the computer gotcha. to try to see if they could make it happen in the model. And so and that's kind look, of how they could yeah. they could narrow it down to the tactics. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Absolutely. I mean, it's obviously important yeah. to know how, you know, the animal kingdom <laughs> works among themselves. But is there anything from this research that could be applied to human behavior, Blair? Yeah, well, I mean, of course there's gaming involved. So <laughs> there's the whole idea that you could improve uh, video games to kind of their target tracking methods and uh, and the way that you would adjust that in the way that a game functions. But I think there's a lot more real world applications in video in in video kind of programming that um i know we were talking to roger about his, if he has any porch pirates he had his his camera out front can the camera <laughs> detect where the person's going ahead of time so that you don't miss the person if they're moving really fast right so you could mm. adjust kind of 
the technology related to cameras. Um, but I'm also thinking things like drones or robots, if they have targeting involved, um, yeah. doesn't have to be violent targeting. It could be, no. uh, I know, mean, aid, I, my right? mind immediately went to Arrest like military you. uses. Sure. Because sure. I'm like, you know, you know, course, bats and yeah. moths, like bats got this down. If we can, if we can act a little bit more bat, like, you know, we can, you know, do stuff. I don't know, in the cave, wherever. <laughs> yeah. I, I was also thinking about conservation strategies. So for camera traps, of course, but also if you were trying to uh, capture and release any animals for any specific reasons, like for conservation efforts where you need to collect DNA or re locate an animal um, or if you need to remove invasives, you could actually use this to help target those animals as well. Yeah. Um, we could also, I mean, the, there's, there's, tr the, you know, tracking, uh, you mentioned video, but like tracking video from a quadcopter, right? There, that is done a mm -hmm. lot of times to, to track various things, sometimes people, but sometimes wildlife, uh, you know, and sometimes even just observational of like traffic and things like that. I feel like it could, it could be useful, uh, in that situation. And, and Roger's private chatting, like, what about drone delivery, you know, to make sure your package <laughs> arrives at the place you're, yes. you're supposed to, I guess it could be uh, for that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for bringing the bats, Blair. It's good to have them. Yeah. We learned so much pleasure. from from the bats. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, folks, if you have questions about anything we talk about on the show, you can always email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. So let's check out your recent mailbag. Let's do it. Good news for people thinking of taking Uber up on their $1,000 offer to give up their car for a month. Julian writes on Patreon, Uber allows you to request a car that will take one pet through Uber Pet. It's up to the driver if they allow more. I used on Wednesday. I used this on Wednesday for my cat's claw trimming appointment since my mom can no longer drive and I've never been able to. It went very well. Hmm. Lyft requires you to contact the driver and ask permission after you've requested the ride itself. This is a, a bigger part of a conversation where we were talking about, you know, can we live without our own cars? And one of my points was. I got a dog. I mean, I can't just like put a dog in the back of an Uber, maybe in the back of a Waymo, but you know, I don't know. I, am hey, I so you've do never that? done that. You've never taken Uber pet. I haven't either. So I've taken an Uber with my cats and carriers before they clamp down on that. I'm not, but that wasn't Uber pet. That was no. just a regular old. I don't Uber. think yeah. Uber pet even existed. I had, the person just showed up at my house and I was like, hi, we're going to the vet. <laughs> They're in carriers. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry. Never actually, you know, nothing bad happened, but, um, I think it, we're in a situation now where a lot of cars would be like, no, ma'am, sorry. Can't do that. So yeah, man, I Blair, feel like a lot of humans go to a lot more destructive, places in an uber than than a lot of pets actually yeah so. yeah and, and so yeah. you haven't tried uber pet yet either no. no all right i'm gonna have to you know bundle old 10 week old seven in the uh <laughs> in the uber pet give it a give it a try see how it goes uh martin wrote in about our conversation with scott johnson on wednesday's show about forza horizon 4 being delisted uh martin also said it was not a surprise uh, and he said neither are the complaints about it. Uh, Martin writes, the first three Forza Horizon games were delisted four years after release, each time with associated outrage. For the first two games, the blow was softened by giving the game away for free with Games with Gold the month of delisting. Of course, this led to more complaints when they didn't do this for Forza Horizon 3. If anything, it's, surprised, it's a surprise that 4 was on sale for six years. I love FH4. I've tried FH5, and it just didn't click the same way. Could be my UK bias showing. I'll continue to play FH4, though I'll have to get the disc off the shelf now as I've been playing it on a Microsoft Rewards funded Game Pass subscription, which I don't think qualifies for the free credit. Oh, life is hard sometimes. It really, really is. But you know what makes it easier, Sarah? What? Len Peralta drawing something about your life. Len <laughs> has been illustrating the show today. What have you drawn for us, Len? You know, fascinating topic about bats. Uh, Blair and I were talking a little bit about bats before the show. I just think bats are fascinating. So very, very cool stuff. But you know who isn't really down with bats? Is this uh, guy. The Joker? 
is Batman. Batman. Oh, I knew Batman. it. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's a, he thinks they're a show off. Come on, he has all these toys to kind of figure stuff out, and of mm -hmm. course, the actual bats <laughs> are the ones who are able to do the targeting. So, uh, so very cool uh, topic today. It allowed me to draw Batman, which thank you so much for allowing me to. Do. <laughs> and um, if you want to, if you want the art, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com for slash Len. You get it immediately if you become back me at the DTNS lover level, or just go the old route and go to my online store, lenperaltstore.com, where you can download it immediately and uh, also maybe commission me for something coming up. It's the 4th of July. Do people commission stuff for 4th of July? Who knows? Well, you can be the first. I think, I think Find so. out soon. Yeah. yeah. Commission yeah. Len uh, instead of lighting off firecrackers near my house. Declare your independence <laughs> from corporate <laughs> art. Commission Len. Right. Yes. That's right. Done by yeah. an actual human being. Do it. Although, Do yeah, it now. So. Excellent. Blair Bazdrich, also such a pleasure to have you. We're so glad to have you back after some time, uh, you know, bats included. Let folks know where they can keep up with what you're up to these days. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can find me at Blair's Menagerie. I'm going to say on threads. I don't really go on that other place anymore. I'm also at Blair Baz on um, Instagram. And you can find me on This Week in Science every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific time on YouTube, Facebook twist.org slash live and you can find out all about us at twist.org um, you can also go to our patreon and follow us there or you can go to our zazzle store and buy some of my art yes not as professional as lens but still <laughs> uh full of animals awesome <laughs> Fantastic. DTNS patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We're doing a quiz on echolocation and sonar uh, because I think Blair paid Roger to make that the quiz today. Who knows? <laughs> uh, maybe Len is a secret sonar expert. I don't know. Stick around and find out. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. And always find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We love our live audience. Love to have you with us, but we're always on demand as well. We will be back on Monday with a VidCon wrap-up with David Spurk. Talk to you then and have a great weekend. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer, Joe Kuntz. Producer at large, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows include Justin Robert Young and Scott Johnson. Guests on this week's shows included Will Smith and Blair Bazdrich. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>